Hi everyone. Hi. I'm out with my youngest two. Um, and they brought their bike and their scooter, so we're just out for a little bit of a walk around. And they are busy playing together. Um, a game they've made up, which involves them hiding each other's shoes. Which brings me nicely onto this week's topic of play. And I was having a think about what um, people need to know about play, particularly in an unschooling context. And I came up with a few ideas, surprisingly. Firstly, play comes naturally to children. It's the way that they are organically designed to function and work and their play is their life. If they're um, uninterrupted and left to their own devices, it's something that they do all of their own accord. And as children play, they are learning. They gather in um, information about the world around them and making sense of it all. And in unschooling, we talk a lot about um, embracing their curiosity and following paths of joy and natural learning and following their interests and all these things can be identified if we allow our children to play and we follow their natural paths that they are taking. Secondly, the inherent value of play is in the process of play itself. So genuine play is child initiated, free flowing play. There's no room for adult-led programs that lead children through play-based activities with some form of end goal. Children need to be able to choose how they engage with the activity and they need to have the option to opt in or opt out of what they are doing. The structure and the form that their play takes is discussed and dictated between all the participants of the play and are agreed on by all the participants in the group. Thirdly, Play is a worthy tool to be used by anyone of any age. Now we often think of um, play being the work of childhood or it's easy for us to see how play is used and utilised by children who are really young. And then we take our children and we put them in schools and we give them a new way to learn. Now children who don't have that experience and are allowed to continue growing and developing via their natural way of play continue to do just that. But what happens is it increasingly starts to look more like learning or more like what we would associate with academic pursuits and they start to develop lifelong interests in certain things and continue to look at other things momentarily or briefly but you can start to see patterns and connections in their play and in what they're doing and how they choose to spend their time and as children get older we tend not to use the word play quite so much 
and we might start to use terms like self-directed learning or autonomous education or life learning but actually all these things have the hallmarks and the characteristics of play it just transforms into an easier way for maybe adults to understand the learning that is going on and what is happening and for children who are hang on my cat is chasing a rabbit okay stop and for children who have maybe had some experience of school and been in school um, it can take some time for them to find what it is that interests them and what they want to do but that's all part of the process and when we start looking for things that spark their curiosity and the things that they're interested in we're really asking um, what it is that they enjoy playing these things are all um, connected to the idea of self-directed education and the more we allow our children space and time to heal from school trauma or to find their own passions and their own motivation and the things that they spark joy in them the more they will find their own path and their own learning journeys for the eager-eyed amongst you you will realize that this um, video was made in two parts over two days actually um, I don't apologize for that that's the way our life is I can't always um, fit things in in one easy chunk and so today I'm actually sat um, in my garden again whereas uh, the first half of the video was in our local um, sports field um, the first part of the video I was watching my children playing on their bikes and with their Barbies and this time around I'm watching my pets play so we've let the rabbits out for a bit of a run around the garden but we have to oversee um, the cat rabbit relationship which is going quite well and tends to be more playful um, than anything else but it's always worth overseeing so no one gets too intimidated or hurt um, I wrote lots and lots about play last week on the blog um, and there will be lots and lots more to come because I like talking about play um, but hopefully this has just given you three things to think about and a starting point really about where I'm coming from when I talk about um, play and children's play and what, what that actually really is and how that relates to our lives as an unschooling family. Um, thank you for joining me. I'll put some links in the description box and you can subscribe here obviously and please feel free to share anything that you find helpful or interesting with others and it'd be great to hear from you. Um, the most active place to find me is on my Facebook page but you can also um, sign up to get notifications when I post things um, on the blog as well via the blog or um, Twitter is also available for that too um, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye!